the your, your idea of the city and and how you know the resource based economy and all this all these other it things it isn't really a city it really is a university yes. for all people that live there it doesn't end yes. it's continuous information you don't get a phd and walk out you get continuous education modification of viewpoints you get all kinds of viewpoints so you're updated all the time you never get out of school and say i guess the youngsters are learning new things you're learning new things all the time i the university is a commercial institution as far as i'm concerned there's nothing to do with science when you get out in the lab and go to work and get your hands on it then it's real but if you come up with ideas that are different than conventional ideas if you're not a graduate of a university you don't get the same hearing you get so uh, you're probably considered more or less uh, non institutional education and that would be a criticism against the university theory a person that graduates from university is not willing to take their hat off and say hey that's an interesting concept you know cuz they put a lot of effort in going to school and if you come out with ideas that are different it, it is not to their advantage to uphold you do you understand that okay well so having a chat with um... well, I, that's the price you pay i mean if you want to go off on your own you you uh, meet with additional conflict because the institution doesn't sanctify it and that goes for business and electronics or whatever field whatever field you're in because in an economic system where there's money to be gained uh, it's not a question of trust it's a question of survival if a person is a graduate of a given institute and they would yield although some have but if they would yield it it's an attack on the institution but i don't attack the institutions i describe what i feel is incorrect i don't attack them i feel certain things are not as useful that they such as the purpose of things in life i think that comes from religion the influence of religion i myself do not believe there's any purpose anything in the body i believe you're born with differences and if differences are useful you survive if they're not you don't survive it has nothing to do with purpose i don't think the purpose of the eyes are to see i think you have eyes and you see if there's light but if there's no light you have eyes and you don't see yes but they say the purpose of teeth is to chew food you have teeth and you chew food organisms without teeth tend to digest their food and mosquitoes don't have teeth but they they can dissolve when they when they inject a substance into you that's a non-coagulant and then they siphon up the digestive stuff yes. they they inject a digester in here so you can say what's the purpose of mosquitoes what's the purpose of no teeth they don't need them and the whales for example don't have anything you can really call teeth they they have all kinds of organisms without teeth but they always say that's the purpose of it and i indicate that if children were born with a ball of fat under the elbow they say that well that's that's the, to to reduce injury when they fall then you'll notice in time it's absorbed when they learn to walk they they project their own purpose in i i would say the purpose of bones is to be broken the purpose of sneezing and coughing is to infect other people if you want a purpose to things yes. i think malaria is infectious and the purpose of the malaria mosquito is to get blood in the process you become infected 
I don't believe the purpose of malaria is to keep the population down. I don't believe nature sits back with any purpose. It just goes. And if you don't understand that, when a hurricane comes to a church, it doesn't go around it or above it and down. It blows it away too. Now you can say if you want the purpose of hurricanes are to blow buildings apart. The purpose of earthquakes is to keep the population down in number. You know, if that were true, earthquakes would occur when beaches were crowded with people. And then a Tsami would go. It was to control the population. But the Sami can come any time. Well, why do you think humans have this continuous ability to keep going down to things being either or, you know, good, bad, right, wrong? Why, how can we get out of this this conditioning, of this perpetuating of it being the ultimate good? Well, and the you can make bad? films, you can make motion pictures, and you can show different points of view. Those that are disposed toward this type of view want will, and those that are not will not. For example, most people are brought up with romantic notions. And if you say man is nothing but a biochemical machine, it's very offensive. It isn't pleasant at all. Yes. I'd rather think that I make my own decisions, that I have free will and I can make my own choices. Of course, I feel that way. I feel like I'm making my own choices. But I also know that it's within the realm of my background. I can never ask for some unit that doesn't exist, yes. and neither can anyone else. I've never heard an Indian ask for an automatic rifle. I might, might like a better bow and arrow. I never heard of an Eskimo saying, uh, I'd like to have geothermal energy to heat my igloo. It's outside of his frame of reference. So when I say man has no choice, I mean, the choices and the options are within the frame of reference that the organism grows up in. In King Arthur's time, you might want a horse-drawn chariot. You don't ask for Mercedes, it's just, or a twin-engine beach craft. You can't. So when I say man has no choice, I mean with, the choice is always within you, what you learn. If you live near a river and everybody clubs a fish rather than a fish hook, that would be your choice to get a good club and hit the fish with it. But surely there's... And if that's true, where does innovation come from if everybody has no choice? They see or encounter a new situation. And if they have a need for what they're seeing, they lock on. If they don't have a need for it, they don't. For instance, if you break a matchstick and put a drop of water at the broken junction, the matchstick moves. If you're interested in, in dynamics of movement, you'll stay out of the way you have and move on. You don't make something of most of the things you see because your brain is regulated to a certain type of evaluation and you don't make those associations. Now, if an Eskimo happened to build a square igloo, which is almost impossible, and it didn't cave in, he would use that. And it cave in, and the Eskimo priest or witch doctor would say that you, you caved in because you didn't follow the Eskimo tradition. You know, people always invent stories. They have to, to comfort themselves. They account for things. The reason for food trees is to supply food for people. The food trees will grow food whether there's people around or not. If every man on earth killed every other man, fruit would still grow on trees. You understand? Do you think we can, we can teach ourselves out of this? Yes, we can. Could you? But you can't get hold of people. They go to school because they want a profession and make a living. Science is a procedural system, and scientists tend to use a procedural system. And they seem to come up with closer approximations of reality. Non-scientific systems project their own values, 
scientists tend to use more accurate systems. But they're not free because they're brought up in a given culture. Some scientists may be brought up in a Nazi culture and uh, the scientific method doesn't deal with that. That has to do with their family relationship to the land they live in and they have certain feelings of loyalty which are apart from their scientific training. So I would say that scientists, like everyone else, reflect their culture. They're not necessarily always scientific. They may be in their unique branch of research, but in human relations, I don't think they're capable of being scientific. And besides, if you're scientific in human relations, you'd have to be with a girl that understands what you're talking about. The probability is very low. If you're a behavioral scientist, for example, normal people think you can see through them or you have a kind of a wit that's outside of them and they feel they don't want to be looked at by an intelligent person because they don't feel good. They don't feel secure. So, besides, even if you were able to do that, you wouldn't do that because it would be offensive to that person yes. to tell them that you can see their soul. You know what I mean? What good would that do? It's best to understand people and the way they react. Um, Arabs tend to react to the bottom line. If they want something, they just see something that they want, and they say, how much is it? And the guy goes to a story. It was made by a hundred blind people. It took him 20 years to make. The Arab just says, how much is it? He just knows, stays with the bottom line. And there are a lot of people that are salespeople that come off with all kinds of things that are irrelevant to where you want to go. Because if you go up to a bridge and the guy says, the bridge is closed, your next question is, when does it open? If you want to get to the other side. It's not this summer, next summer. Then you either go down and take a ferry across or say, God damn, that bridge patrolman, I don't like him at all. He's obeying orders. So, a lot of conversation between people is blah, 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 meaning very little signal. It's called high noise level in electronics. You know what that means? When we listen to voice, we don't want static. We just want to hear the voice. But some systems are broken down, they're not working well, so you get a lot of noise and crackle. Scientists say, what's the signal to noise ratio? If you say all the noise has been eliminated, the signal is smooth, just voice. That's what you want. You don't want noise. And when you turn a light on, you don't want heat. You just want light. But heat is a byproduct of the old type of lamps. The fluorescent lamp gives off less heat and more light. So when you think of what it is that you want, Yes, you want a dishwasher, but if there's no dishwasher, you get a slave to wash your dishes. But, you uh, understand? Don't, don't you think that is an is, is important part? Like, for instance, the brain creates a lot of noise, and on top of that noise, people are able to, to identify the things that are of value. For instance, like uh, with the Second World War, they found out that the instruments worked better when they were flying, when there was lots of noise and activity, as opposed to when they were on the ground. So humans create a lot of noise. For instance, it's hard to identify a mosquito against a black background, but if you put a white noise over there. So maybe maybe there's there's a lot of noise that we need so that we can decide what is noise and what's important. Do you think that's well, kind of how the I brain works? Say all things that deflect the direction of human behavior has to be varied so that it allows man to operate at his best. Yes. So we do that when it rains, we go under a tree or we carry an umbrella because we don't like the powder of rain. But if we control the weather, that would be the, what we really want. We don't want umbrellas. We really ultimately want to control things in the environment 
so that we can operate more effectively. Man really doesn't care about his fellow man unless his fellow man is extensional to him. You know what that means? If a person brings you food, another person brings you water, those people you're concerned with. But if another person just plays the violin and you're not around, he is of no significance to you. If a tree, if you got under it in the summer and it was much cooler due to the fact that it generates refrigeration, you would protect those trees for your gain. But in the North Pole, they would never sell those trees. No one gives a damn about them. In fact, they dislike them.